Radio Rahim with Boots Ennis. We're in Washington, D.C., this great nation's capital, where people have become president, where people have made their legend around the country. And you, on an undercard fight, I think have brought as much attention as the main event fighter. Yeah. Like, are you aware of how much the boxing community right now is anticipating a great year from you and a great career from you? Yeah, I'm definitely aware, you know, uh, how everybody's gravi gravitating towards me and things like that. You know, uh, it's a great card to be on, a great card to shine on, and I can't wait. Now, you know, coming up in the boxing world at this stage, no world titles yet. You're calling for those kind of fights and the anticipation and the expectation that the fans have for your performance. I saw you do a workout. It looked like like your workout for the day. <laughs> Are you feeling any pressure to every time you're in front of these cameras deliver for the fans who expect so much greatness from you? No, nah, no pressure. Uh, like I said before, I've been around this game for a long time. Uh, all the cameras, lights, nothing new to me. You know, it's just, just another day in the office. Well, another day in the office will be Saturday night. That's the real office. And still, you haven't gotten the kind of world title opponent that you're hoping for. But on Saturday night, what's the challenge for you? Uh, that's, uh, I feel like I'm, we don't know. You know, uh, we don't know what the challenge is, but we'll see on Saturday night, you know. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to do my thing and have fun. You know, put on a show for the fans, look good doing it, you know, bring it home that knockout. Uh, you have an incredible knockout record. I remember talking to Yanadi Golovkin and what his record was like, 90 plus percent knockout. It, and it's not been against uh, low class opponents. You you face quality opponents up until this stage. Do you feel like there is a, a challenge that you haven't had to face yet at this stage of your career? What I mean by that is, are, are these still walk through opponents, not because they're not talented, but because you're so talented. Uh, I mean, like I always say, we don't get paid for overtime. So if I find a shot, I'm gonna take it. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. You know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I know, I just know we don't get paid for overtime. And, and if I see a shot, I'm gonna definitely take it. And, and I'm gonna just continue to keep doing that. You know, I'm not not playing around. I've heard your father say that you guys don't really game plan for an opponent. You just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but is there a time that you think where you might have to step up the way you train and the way you approach an opponent when the competition gets stiffer? Uh, I feel like the better the competition be, the better I'm gonna be, and the easier it's gonna be. You know, uh, when I fight somebody that's sharp like me, you know, it's gonna take my game to the next level. But uh, yeah, definitely when I fight those other guys, definitely we'll probably do a little bit more. You know, uh, you know, and continue to keep running. That's all. Obviously, uh, you're fighting on PBC, so it would seem that Errol Spence is uh, closer in reach, but I know you want Spence or Crawford. What's the conversation been like in the back rooms about making those fights happen? Uh, not too sure. You know, I let my dad handle all that. You know, I just focus on fighting. You know, my dad know more about that than me, you know, but that's the fights that we want. And I know my dad be trying to get them, so. For you, is it world titles that are your goal or is it fighting the best? Sometimes you have to pick. My goal is to be undisputed at 47, 54, 60, and maybe even 68. You know, I want to be the one of the first men to do that. So, you know, I, I'm ready. I can't wait. Is there a fighter in the game now that you look at and be like, I want to have a career that looks like that? No, I want to have my own career, my own legacy. Uh, I want, like I said before, I want to continue to keep fighting top guys after this. You know, I, big name guys. That's it. What's it like coming up in a boxing family? Like, obviously your, bo your father is a fighter, he's brought you up, your siblings are fighters. What's that community like at home? Uh, it's a great community, you know. It's, uh, it's blessed that, you know, have Philly behind me, supporting me. And I can't wait for everybody to get down here, you know. Uh, I can't wait to put on in front of DC. Is this, I mean, just because of the location and where you are in your career, the biggest fight for you thus far? Uh, the location and being on pay-per-view, yes. Uh, Fight-wise, I'm not sure, you know, but I'm blessed to be on peer review, you know, and I can't wait, you know. I'm ready to shine, get this knockout. Radio Rahe with Jerome Boots Ennis. It's my first time covering your fight. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be the first time a lot of fans get to see you on a stage like this. So good luck on Saturday night, January 14th. Radio Rahe with Boots Ennis. Fake it till you make it, eh? And if you
worst thoughts saying, turn them to a game. Take the best thoughts saying, put them on display. I'm repeating your brain till you're feeling no more pain. Uh. Never slow yourself down, you can do some more. Push back, start a pain, and you'll find the door. Open it up, and finally explore. Grab it that you thought you could never do before. Uh. And even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man.